Hello, everybody who is uh, watching this on VOD. I think we'll leave this up so you can watch it. This is going to be a workshop. It's not about EVE Online directly. Indirectly, it is, because all the content I'll be editing will be EVE Online related. So you might ask, how does uh, Talking in Stations put together a podcast? That's a good question. Even we don't know how we do it. Um, we're testing new tools all the time, uh, subscribing to things, trying to figure out if they'll fit, if they'll work. Are they easy to teach? Can uh, can we utilize them enough to warrant um, the cost and all that sort of thing? So it is an evolution. We've been doing this for six years, and now we're um, just learning about just learning new tools and practicing with new tools and seeing if we can get good enough at it that we can teach it to other people in TIS. Um, or it, does it lift enough weight? to merit its use anyway, or does it create more work um, with benefits that don't really count? So today, uh, you know, we have art lessons. So I'll show you how to use Photoshop, although Photoshop's not really the way to go anymore. Canva is. Uh, we show you Canva. We do a workshop on Canva. We do a workshop on audio editing, cleaning up. We do workshops on uh, actual streaming. Those are internal, basically. Um, but we have it, and I've done some video editing workshops too, but those workshops are, I guess, not as interesting as this one's going to be. This here is a, a program called Descript. It's new, works on artificial intelligence like Canva does. Um, so I'm excited to show it to you. I'm going to actually live edit um, Artemis's last podcast since he was concise and it's a 30 minute deal. So I'll get through a bunch of that. I won't finish it before that. It takes about three times as much time editing as it does producing or recording. So uh, a half hour podcast takes at least an hour and a half of concentrated effort. But here I'm going to be talking with the crowd, with the audience. And so it won't be concentrated. Therefore, it'll take twice as long. So it's about a mm, three hour process to do a half hour which I think is okay. But this does speed it up. It changes the nature of editing. It's really a mind-blowing, game-changing application, which I'll show you. Um, but is it worth it? We can explore all that at the end, I suppose, because I should show you what this is. And uh, I think it's a real toss-up, even though this is going to blow your mind, this program. Uh, it's still a real toss-up as to, is this really worth the effort? I guess I could explain that really quickly. Like when we look at our uh, metrics and we analyze our metrics, creating analytics, right? You have metrics, then you look at them, that creates analytics. Analyzing your metrics, what's working, what's not working, where are the optimization points? That's the kind of stuff you look at when you do these sort of things. And a lot of times you can, and I've seen it before, you can put a lot of effort in the wrong place I was watching a video recently of a guy who, who built his whole community and he did everything right. And it, it plateaued and it kind of failed. And then he, uh, he did that on Patreon and then he rebuilt it and he did it on YouTube and he built it. He did everything right. He had all the polish. He had all the people. Um, the service was amazing. It still plateaued and kind of fell off. And he did it like four or five times on many different platforms. And he was like, what's going wrong here? We're, we're, we're working as hard as we can. We're, we're abiding by best practices to build a community. What's going on here? And he had to figure out what he was putting a lot of work into the stuff that was cool, but not really worth it. And we run into this at TIS a lot. We put a lot of work into stuff that's cool, not really worth it. We could have really nice titles. We could have animation. We could have uh, a lot of different things. You could set them up once and just trigger them. But uh, the assembly process takes a long time. People burn out. Shows fall through the cracks. And that whiz-bang title that really didn't matter just lost you consistency. Those are the kinds of balances that, that uh, we deal with. So a lot of times, you know, we look like an amateur show, but we focus on the content. We focus on the information. 
And that is where we feel like the real value is. People mostly listen anyway, as they're doing something else. So they're really just kind of hearing you. If we have the right speakers on, it's a, it's a relaxing process. If we have the wrong speakers on or people are rude to each other, it might be entertaining, but it's also very grating. And so, uh, and your tone changes over time. You start hurting the brand and there's, again, all those considerations. So where does talking in stations put the effort? Well, look at your metrics, look at your analytics, then use your intuition and experience to figure out where should we put money in people to create the stuff that people actually want in the same, in the rhythm that they want it. And uh, how do we cut away so much fluff? Like this whole introduction <laughs> that I did just so that we could wait for more people to show up before I start. Uh, I'm just kidding. This is a good way to, this is really the kind of stuff that goes into every podcast, not just TIS. There's a lot of work that happens behind the scenes just to get something out there, even if it looks amateurish, just to get it out there. Just getting the information is a lot of work. Presenting the information, a lot of work. Publishing the information, a lot of work. And then holding a community together or keeping it relevant, a lot of work. There's a lot of different things that need to happen. And you can't teach it. People just need to do it, fail at it, try again, fail at it, try again, fail at it. And you start failing, more or less you start failing upwards. Okay, so this application is Descript. And what it is, is actually, in my case, it's a video editor, but it works like a writer works, which is great for me because that's what I like to do. Um, more than anything, just don't have time for it. But I came from writing. I wrote 250 articles about EVE Online for different uh, web webzines or magazines. And um, that's really where my heart is, but it's, it's uh, really time consuming to write. And I'll show you why here as we do this. You'll see how time consuming this is. Um, but this is interesting because you take that that editorial work as a writer and it applies to video. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to edit my script here that has been produced for me by the app and it's going to edit the video. And as you could do this with audio, but we're doing it with video. And as I correct um, the script, I'm also generating subtitles or a closed caption, which is fantastic, uh, which means that we can actually um, give this to Google in the right format, which you import, and we'll have very accurate, Eve accurate, right? It's a lot of specialized language, but Eve accurate closed captioning for people who need that, who are hearing impaired, but also for people of other languages. So that allows us to get adjacent users, somebody who speaks uh, Chinese, for instance, or not Chinese, Mandarin, um, but uh, for instance, but, um, you know, it has, has English skills, but would love to read it in his native language. Same with Korean or uh, German or any of the European countries that are localized. Uh, maybe they prefer to read the closed captioning in their language as opposed to trying to figure out what we're saying when we're talking all that Eve lingo. So that's a good benefit. That has potential to reach more people. But look how much work it is. We'll check it out. All right, we'll start with the commercial. This is an Artemis one-on-one -on -one show. It's 30 minutes. I clipped off the ends already, so we don't have to do that. This is a February 8th show. It's actually not published yet, so I may do this and actually publish this version of it. Um, so let's see. Let's see how this starts. Starts out with a commercial. Well, first, I'm going to check the timeline down here because I hope that, yeah, that's way too much. So I'm just going to grab this and drag it. This works a lot like Final Cut. If you've ever worked with that, you just grab the edges um, and drag them over. It even looks like it. And so here's where it begins. Story that I. Let's try that again. Start here. HiSec Buyback offers 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. That's our sponsor. This is Talking in Stations, a show about EVE Online. I am your host, Artemis Abosa, and we're going to be continuing our string. He didn't say D. We're going to D continuing our script. So first of all, uh, his name isn't Artemis uh, Rabosa. So let me change that quick. So I have to hit an editing key. It opens up 
the actual text. So I'm not affecting the actual video here. I just want to correct his name. It's Artemis Alabosa, as you can see by his name tag. Easy change. Uh, but he says here, we're going to... And we're going to D, continuing our... He did say D, but I think he meant B. We're going to B. So I will go ahead and change that for him so that the, you know, so the people reading it uh, in closed captions will actually get it. And here's the other thing. This doesn't have to just be closed caption. You can actually print this as an article along with the video, much like NPR does, or uh, I think... New York Times does that. They have a podcast, but they have an entire transcript below. This is probably the tool they're using to do that. Continuing our string of a little bit of prep work before jumping into the proper show after a short break. I'm gonna be honest, um, most of the prep work is already done. So I'm gonna be just looking to see if there are any story. Okay, let's stop because I may be on the wrong script. Let's see if this is the right script. it would have been hopeless to do so wrote just uh okay we'll go back to that and then and we'll just i i thought that i had trimmed off all this beginning uh i did on the ex other script so let me see here yeah there's the break okay so all this is a warm-up so we now do a lot of this stuff we do a warm-up we research in front of you to show you how to do it. Um, we give that to like our Patreons and supporters so they can watch it later if they want. But then when we actually publish, we really only want to publish the stuff that we meant to, to do, like what all the work was for. So let's start that again. Yeah, this looks right. You can see HiSec is spelled right here. Uh, so here we go. Oh, I already see an error. That's 90% Jita, not with a G, is it? So a lot of this comes down to spell checking. We saw that, so I'll skip down here. Simply go to highsec.evebuyback. This is Talking in Stations, a show about EVE Online. I am your host, Artemis Albosa. It is currently Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Welcome to the show. We've got quite a bit of information for you. We aren't going to be doing a deep dive into any particular story, but we do have quite a few just updates of activity that's been happening around the map, things you might want to know or might want to just get an update on. So we're going to roll through all of those. Thank you very much to everybody who stuck with me through the pre-show while we gathered some additional stories to include in today's topic list. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, uh, so he says a thank you there. So just in the in, in the interest of showing you how this works, uh, so thank you very much for those guys sticking with me through something that you didn't see. Um, let's just take that out, and if we just hit delete on that type, we'll uh, we'll see an edit through all of those, and let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Let's try that one more time so you can see that bit better. Want to just get an update on? So we're going to roll through all of those. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so we have a long gap here. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just cut this. And this is like normal editing. So I'll take the timeline. I'll take a blade to it. That's a razor blade, by the way, the little icon. I'll take that piece because I clipped one in and the other and just delete it. That'll shorten the time. We're going to roll through all of those. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so first thing. A bit of an exciting announcement, actually. I'll let that go. That was just a glitch of sound, um, and there's not much I can fix there, so we'll let it go. If you did not see, we used to run the ads for them on TIS because it's just fantastic. Katya Say, you may recognize the name as the pilot who was the first like transverse all of the systems in EVE Online. I think has some sort of world record as a result, but definitely the statue that you see portrayed here has been working with some other folks to make a really fantastic lore-based machinima series, I guess is the best way I could describe it. It is just phenomenal. One of the best pieces of EVE content just ever, period, end of story. So the first episode came out. It was called New Eden Travelers in the Beginning. And it was phenomenal. Been extremely well received. If you haven't seen it yet, I would highly... Okay, let's stop there. In the... Uh... New Eden Travelers in the beginning, 
that's not actually how the title should look. So what we'll do real quick is go over to YouTube, over to Cardia SAE, that channel, that's the right channel. Pause that for a second. We'll look at videos. Uh, so we have, here it is. We'll see if we can capture that. There's the actual title. So I'll just copy that. And then when I come back here, I'll select that whole thing. And here it just read it. So it's not a title form. Um, and so I'll just replace that text with the exact title. So when people read this, it's exactly correct. Nuiden Travelers in the beginning. And it was phenomenal. Been extremely well received. If you haven't seen it yet, I would highly recommend it. But episode number two is coming out this Thursday at 2100 Eve time. And it will be uploaded straight here on Katya Say's YouTube channel. So if you are not subscribed yet, certainly do so. Make sure you get a notification about that. Of course, I, I mean, with how great these videos are, like it'll be shared on. Did you hear that uh, word whisker? We call it word whiskers when they, when, and, and it's terribly common. Um, there's one now. Anytime you say, uh, to hold space, uh, uh, mm, like, you know, these are all words that are being used to hold space because your thoughts are accumulating language. <laughs> They're creating language, but your body doesn't want to give up the talk space. So you fill it with a word whisker. We used to call that in speech class. And I just heard one, so let's go see if you can catch it. I haven't seen it yet. I would highly recommend it. But episode it's here. So if you are not subscribed yet, certainly do so. Make sure you get a notification about that. Of course, I, I mean, with how great these videos are. Like he says, of course, with how great these videos are, that would totally make sense. But he sticks an I mean in there because I think he's realigning his the direction of his language, which is very interesting to watch this kind of thing, um, you know, in post. So I'm going to take out I mean, because clearly he's he's grabbing for more authenticity there. So we'll just delete that. I'll delete the uh, the period there too, since the transcript won't read right. With how great the, the period. See, it automatically spaces, so I don't need to do the spacing and all that stuff. I just need to delete stuff and it'll figure out that there's a gap there. So let's listen to this again without the I mean. Notification about that. Of course, like with how great these videos are, like it'll be shared on Reddit, on Twitter, like you will see it around. Leave that like in there, but that's, well, no, let's get rid of that too. All right, you notice it capitalized the Y there. Uh, this type might be a little small for you to see. I'll see if I can. No, that works on the timeline. I don't think the transcript can get uh, bigger. But uh, it automatically capitalized, so. Reddit, on Twitter, you will see it around, but make sure you don't miss it because it's going to be great. And if you haven't already, take the time to see episode one so that episode two is that much more enjoyable to you. Okay, long gap here, so let's take care of that. Again, razor blades out. Chop. Chop. Selection tool. Delete. And that'll shorten that space. Able to. All righty. So with that out of the way, um, sorry, I'll stop gushing about that fantastic stuff. Let's jump into some other player news, specifically. That's kind of unnecessary, so we'll take that out too. Now this may end up sounding too choppy, and uh, there's ways to remedy that. I can show you some of those, but but uh, I think this flows very well if you get rid of that extra language. So even with the all righty, that can be folksy. Why not? He's folksy. All righty. So with that out of the way, let's jump into some other player news, specifically some combat-oriented things. Sunday show, in case you met, in case you missed it, we had some fantastic guests on with Matterall. Talked a lot about Pochven and Fraternity's involvement with it, and the fighting still continues there. Uh, Rook Capel still has a few structures remaining. Fraternity is still intent on removing. Them. I see fraternity with lowercase f. Let's correct that again for the transcript. And this is kind of cool. You actually just hold down Q and it wants to, it, it immediately knows now, whatever I click on next, it will capitalize or it will reverse capitalize. 
And that's a really quick way to go through and capitalize uh, pronouns. Uh, you also notice that Rokapel is spelled right. I did a lot of fixing already. Uh, Astro House spelled right. Poshvin spelled right. I already went through a lot of this. That's why a lot of it's uh, done. Remaining fraternity is still intent on removing those structures, and they successfully took care of a couple of them. In this particular instance, we have... That's a big gap there that we can clip. Uh, there's got to be a better way to do this. I'll, I'll discover it and then reteach this. But for now, I just want to give the momentum. Uh, very important not to kill your gaps. I've done it a little too much already. But when you kill gaps, you, you, you take away breathing space, and it feels unnatural. And I've heard, and I think I even talk to other people that if you eliminate your silences, you will create an unlistenable podcast. You have to have breathing space between words, pauses between words. Uh, when I used to really edit um, my Eve News 24 podcast, <laughs> Ash Durathi. it wasn't just you, Ash. Ash's podcast uh, uh, was one of them, one episode only. He fixed that right away. It was probably an accident. But there were other guys that would, would do that. So what's very interesting is um, when I was editing, when I was editing podcasts, like a lot, when I had like produced material, that was back in 2014, 15. It was Eve News 24 podcast, and it had sound and music and cues, and it was very, very... You know, it was one episode every three weeks and it was only 40 minutes long and it was easy to do. Um, I would actually manually take out space by shortening, shortening it up. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the computer to say, take out everything that's more than a second and a half and shorten it to a second. Um, I, would, I wouldn't use the automatic tools because I wanted to make sure that I gave that thinking time its proper space. So especially when I was doing um, when I was doing CSM interviews, I didn't shorten any spaces because if I asked a question, how long it took that guy or girl to finish or to figure out what to say was part of the interview process. So it's not always a good idea to take out your silences. It's a terrible idea to shorten them and take away all that breathing space that people need. So here we go. Remaining fraternity is still intent on removing those structures, and they successfully took care of a couple of them. In this particular instance, we have a fight, and then a follow-up to what happened after that fight occurred. So the story here... He said occurred, and it didn't pick it up on the transcript, so I'll just fix that by adding it. Make sure you spell it right. There's no spell check on this thing. Follow-up to what happened after that fight occurred. So the story here... And actually, to be completely uh, accurate, he doesn't say fighting occurred. He said fight occurred. Now, you might think, OK, I can see why this is not worth the time. And you would not be wrong. This is not worth the time. Unless I need the transcript to be really good for people uh, that are going to read this or people from other languages. So the story here, Roque Capel had a, an Astrahas that was in its final hull timer. We can take out a, it's not that difficult with this. Had an Astrahas that was in its final hull timer. And fraternity was going to come. Capitalize fraternity. Fraternity was going to come and bash it, but they had to leave. They had to go back to their home system H4 tech H or something. I forget to deal with snuffed out there is the a not correct there there's some <laughs> fight going on so they all left and the timer started repairing but they did get a few people back in after that other dis just to be uh just to be one of those what do they call them uh grammar nazis or whatever i oh, forget it we just back over that period and change it to a comma Okay. Repairing. But they did get a few people back in after that other distraction was handled and managed to pause the timer long enough to get a few more reinforcements. So they just sort of tried to trickle in and get a fleet together to keep this timer paused. And they actually managed at, at the end of things to get the structure on this Astrahas down to 6%. So this 
Astros was almost dead. And they were indeed focusing, as I understand it, their target calls were all damage on the Astrohas. They didn't particularly care about losing their ships. They wanted the structure dead because, if, in case you don't remember, you're unfamiliar with Pochfen mechanics, citadels in the Pochfen region existed before the Pochfen region existed. So Pochfen is made up of systems that used to be in different areas of space. Now Vula, as an example, was high sec, if memory serves. Notoriously so. Uh, it wasn't high sec. This is really cool because I can catch errors like that. Um, and uh, he, Artemis doesn't make many errors, but this is definitely, he's he's reaching back into his memory on stuff that he wasn't even participating in. So it's really just based on uh, stuff. So of course, he's going to miss some small details, but I would have missed them too if you don't see it in writing. Memory serves notoriously so and citadels can't be anchored now that pochfen is the region of pochfen so everything there is grandfathered in if it dies it is permanently dead so they were interested in killing it i wrote obviously we're some quick changes again the capitalization that if shouldn't be capitalized you see that just one click that permanently shouldn't be capitalized so quick so they were interested in killing it a wrote obviously were interested in defending it, and they managed to do so successfully here just by the skin of their teeth, but generating a nice battle report out of it. They brought in some Vargers and a Dread. Revelation, again, worth noting, something unique in Pochfen. You cannot build them anymore. So all the capitals in Pochfen are, were there before they existed. If they die, they're dead for good. Can't get back. So they managed to, to force off and kill quite a few things during this little engagement and see. He says this little engagement, not this civil engagement. So let's change that. Uh, not the civil engagement. We'll say this little, I think. Right? I think that's what he said. So let's listen to that. Force off and kill quite a few things during this little engagement and save their Astrohas this time. Again, by the Real quick, let's take that E off Astro House. It's not a house, it's Haas. I think that's German. Like Bauhaus. This time. Again, by the skin of their teeth, but there were other citadels that were also had reinforcement timers, and Fraternity were less distracted when those timers came around. So uh, here's where it takes some creative uh, decision making. I'm not going to be true to what he said because uh, he kind of goes in two directions here. Citadels that were also had reinforcement time. That were also had doesn't work. So uh, that were, that were, the word were needs to go. So actually, let's just take it out and see what happens. Let's experiment. This might sound cut. Let's but there see. were other citadels that also had reinforcement timers and fraternity were less distracted when those timers came around. So they did end up finishing off another of Rote Capel's citadels in Pochfen. And I do actually. Oh, he gets, he gets a sound cut there, so that uh, needs to be fixed. So that's a period. And actually, let's put that on a different paragraph because he kind of gets cut here. I meant to pull it up. I'm just going to take that part out. It'll delete that whole space on its own, which is cool. And I can actually shorten this again, just by grabbing the side. This works like Final Cut. Let's listen to that one more time. Citadels here. in Pochfen. I want to look at the Pochfen Citadel losses just to show you sort of the scope of destruction that this fraternity campaign against Rote Capel has had. That's uh, singular, not plural. Campaign with an E? Campaign? Is it like champagne? Campaign? I, I don't know. Anyway. The campaign against Rote Capel has had. I, uh, I think he's... Yeah, I lost sound here again. Vargers are nice and... All right, this takes some repair work here. So what I'll do is I'll just splice 
using the razor blade. And I will take this and drag it over here. That'll shorten the space. Um, I might as well put a dash there because he gets cut off. Rote Capel has had. Does he finish the sentence? Against Rote Capel has had. Vargers are nice indeed. What a fantastic ship. And that's. People often talk about. He's responding to the crowd. Should we leave that in or should we take it out? You guys vote. Uh. I think it's a little confusing. So what we'll do is start with people. So I'll erase all this. I'll consider that he finished his thought here. Give that a sentence ending and let's see if that works together. Campaign against Rook Capel has had. People often talk about. Ooh, that's tight, right? Did you hear how tight that was? So you want to widen this up, let him breathe, take a breath and start talking again. Otherwise it'll sound like he's choking. This fraternity campaign against Rook Capel has had. People often talk about how marauders can be disruptive or can make fights not happen, which at a certain scale is very true. Like if, if you are solo roaming or maybe you have a group of five to ten people and you aren't intending to fight against a marauder, a marauder prevents you from taking fights. Let's fix this here. So it did not record the transcript. A marauder prevents, and then it goes on. Here's the cool thing. Whenever you make an edit, it will back you up uh, without you having to manually do it. Um, I've been manually doing that, and I didn't need to. So if I just hit spacebar, it'll say, oh, he corrected here. Then I need to go and start before the correction so he can hear the correction. That's smart software. Prevents you from taking fights. It was dumb in that case because it didn't do what it was supposed to do. A marauder prevents you from taking fights. But. That's a thinking but, so I'm going to leave that as a period. Fights. But marauders also in their current states just enable you as a group to really punch above your weight if you know what you're doing. And if you're willing to shell out the cash, let's be honest, these things are, are obscenely expensive. So it's, and again, you can see that in the numbers. We had 44 versus 68. They were outnumbered. The ships, we had Lokis. I think they were hand Lokis. It says hand lucky. I don't want to know what hand lucky means. Uh, so I think he meant Loki there. Let's we'll change that to Loki, ham Lokis. And... Not hand Lokis, but ham Lokis. Ham. Now we're talking. They were outnumbered. The ships, we had Lokis. I think they were ham Lokis. By the way, I don't think there's any, uh, you know, you guys are going to kill me for taking up your time with little edits like this, but I think it's plural in that sense. Okay, so let's go back to hand Lucky. For hand Lokis? Oh, they focus logic. Yeah, ham yeah, Lokis. And Munins. Let's fix this here. Here's where it starts getting a lot of work. Uh, Munins are not munitions, so I might as well fix that one. Munins. Yeah, ham Lokis and Munins against some Serbs. Not actual Serbs, not people from Serbia. Cerberuses. And Vargers, not Vargas. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, ham Lokis and Munins against some Serbs and the Vargars. And normally, if you have like a Cerberus fleet, as an example, and you're- Not a service fleet, a Cerberus fleet. Cerberus, right? Cerberus? 
I am not the best speller. I can't hardly pronounce things either. If you have so help me like out. a Cerberus fleet as an example, and you're going up against another well-organized fleet, like a Loki fleet. I love that Loki fleet. That's right. That's what I fly. Loki fleets. Like is a Loki fleet with T3 Logi. Not that kind of Logi. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Logi. Okay. Um, maybe this isn't that important for translation because it's not going to translate Logi anyway. Oh, we caught Mun in that time, but I think doesn't Munin have two ends? When I'm not sure, I have to look it up. And this is why everything takes a long time. Yeah, the Hugin and the Munin, the mythology of Norse gods or whatever, so Pantheon. So, yes, it does. Munin. Let's do this. T3. With T3 Logi or a Munin fleet with a decent scimitar wing. With a diff this one's it, it heard uh, with a decent cemetery. Uh, what did he say? Scimitar way. Survey says scimitar. Do you know what a scimitar is? Sometimes <laughs> I love it when I hear uh, new Eve players say scimitar. I think Pro God used to say scimitar, and he refused to change it. It's very American of him, but it's scimitar, which is a sword. It's like an Arabic sword that's curved. Voila, scimitar. Play your D&D &D and you'll know that one. With a decent scimitar wing, you just don't stand. Again, it's scimitar wing that didn't get caught. Easy enough. Decent scimitar wing, you just don't stand a chance of breaking anything unless your opponents make a mistake. What the Vargers and the Marauders let you do is break things. I love the way he delivers that. Uh, let me just change Varger. The Varger and Murrow? Did you say plural? Mistake. What the Vargers and the Marauders let you do is break things. They let you kill things and make the fight bloody. And if the hostiles aren't able to break your Marauders or are distracted because they're trying to shoot a Citadel instead of you, then it really lets you ramp things up and, and take fights when otherwise it would have been hopeless to do so. Roach just wouldn't have had the numbers to contest this timer. All right, this is loaded. Oh, I forgot to click losses. All right, so instead of just... Cat, um, we can take all this out, right? There's no reason. He says, let's try again, so we'll just take all that out this timer. I had a discussion recently about Vargas. You know what? This Vargas guy keeps coming. I consider him a Latino brother, Vargas. Um, but he's not supposed to be here. So what I'm going to do is say, uh, I want all these guys changed. I want all these uh, Vargas's guys out. Um, so we'll do a search and replace for Vargas. Oh, it's only four more times, but I wish I thought of this earlier. Varger. Vargas can only be one thing. So we'll change that. Apply to all. And now we don't have to change that one anymore. Discussion recently about Vargas, or not Vargas specifically, but Marauders specifically on Declarations of War when we were doing the Black Mark Awards. And it's certainly, certainly a divisive topic. I heard a pronoun in there. Declarations of War. The Black Mark Awards. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna say that is like a pronoun. The Black Mark Awards, and it certainly was a divisive topic. Here, declarations of war needs capitalization. Cool. Specifically on declarations of war, when we were doing the Black Mark Awards, and it's certainly certainly a divisive topic, I should say. But I. I, I should, and he. You can actually add, I think if you click enough times, you can just re-add a word, but that messes with your timeline, or it could. So he says, I must say. I should say. But I, I like the state that they're in. Just, I like them. Okay, here we go. Pachven, Citadel losses. 
we can see here uh wrote capel since the uh that uh we could take that out it's no point it's a word whisker we can see here wrote capel since the offset of this recent campaign by fraternity have lost two astrohasses and two fortizars here astro astor house new no. Uh, I'm going to do a real quick search for Astor. So it comes up a couple times. It's okay. We'll just change this one. Uh, Astro House. No. Astro House. Yes, that's correct. Astro House. So remember Haas, German? Astro, space? I think Haas is actually house. So space house? Lost two Astrohasses and two Fortizars all in Nalvula. Um, which Let's get Nalvula right. Just not, not confuse people. Nalvula. I had to look that one up. I'll never forget its spelling. Um, which had quite a few citadels. So th those numbers are dwindling and dwindling fast. And of course, there are more timers like this Astrohas, which was saved. As I understand, it has already been reinforced again. So more content to come here. Uh, it was worth noting. Uh, let me go back. Astro House Nalvula. Astro House with an E. Let's take out that E. Here's House. Ooh, I don't want to delete that necessarily. What I should do is just get the whole phrase and just fix it all together here, where it only changes text, not video. So I won't accidentally delete anything. Timers like this Astro House, which was saved, as I understand it, has already been reinforced again. So I'm going to backspace this guy here because that's part of that thought. Change of thought. This Astro House, which was saved, as I understand it, has already been reinforced again. So more content to come here. Uh, it was worth noting, it was mentioned in our break room, and I just wanted to bring it up here again, that a lot of the defense that Rote Capel is able to put together in Oops, sorry. involves bringing in friends. They can't, like, the scale of Rote Capel versus fraternity is just completely different. It's like a mid-scale alliance versus a block-level alliance. And so they, they have to be able to bat phone to put together the numbers if fraternity really wants to commit to a timer. So that could be a determining factor going forward in how these timers go. If the allies who would otherwise be bat phoned by Rote Capel are preoccupied. Let's let's be real. Bat phone isn't one word, right? Uh, that's a descriptor. So what kind of phone? Bat phone needs a dash. Rote Capel might as well capitalize you while we're here. Otherwise be bat phoned by Rote Capel are preoccupied or if they are don't think that they're going to win. Like, uh, That sounded like a sound gap. I'm going to let it stay. <clears throat> they're going to win. Like, If they think they're just going to show up and get blobbed out of the sun, then they're not going to show up, and these timers might die without much contest. But so far, the fights seem to have been fun, so I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to be fun and bloody going forward. That's, uh, that's the ending of one thought, beginning of another. here <clears throat> be fun and bloody going forward other citadel news let's take a look at v let's take a look at and he says venal but it uh, gets cut off a little bit and that might be his uh mic might be a bit tight on the closing of the gate when he talks so we'll look into that technically but we need to fix this, at least for the transcript. He was saying veil uh, has a period, so I don't need the period. Let's take a look at veil, and then there's a gap. It's kind of warranted. Let's see. Let's take a look at ven venal. Probably should get that right. Look at venal. 
Now I'll remind you once again on the map, Venal is the NPC NullSec region in the north. The NPC NoSec. <laughs> uh, it's not NoSec. That's like nose, nose, K. Okay? Uh, so that is null sec. What kind of sec? Null sec needs a dash. Region in the north, very much surrounded by fraternity space, if you will. And recently, Northern Coalition deployed with a few of their allies to try and clean up the region, the glassing of venal, if you will. They initially. Okay, he said it twice. It's on his mind, and so now I don't want it there because that repetition will be noticeable and now distracting. So if you will, kind of works the first time. It also works the second time, but we just want to pick one. Uh, I'll just eliminate this first one here. Fraternity space ends. Recently, Northern Coalition deployed with a few of their allies to try and clean up the region, the glassing of Venal, if you will. They initially met some decent resistance from Brotherhood of Spacers, who brought in some allies with Volta. A triumvirate was there. There was just a whole host of different groups who showed up, very similar to the Rote Capel situation in Pochfen, where the individual group who was trying to defend their structure stood no chance on their own, but a collection of these smaller groups who were all similarly minded in the way that they play the game, to, to a certain degree, just non-block organizations, if you will, banded together to put up a pretty good Let's take, if you will, out. It's it's very particular. Uh, let's see if it sounds okay. If it doesn't, we'll bring it back. I agree. Just non-block organizations banded together to put up a pretty good. But pretty good, and he got cut off again. Mike is too tight, so when he releases the push to talk, there's not enough uh, meta second delay to keep the gate open, so his voice gets clipped. Uh, pretty good. What was the word? Together to put up a pretty good. Now, uh, there's no sound for it, which kind of sucks. So what we'll do is just, for people reading this, pretty good fight. That's probably what he meant to say, and it's probably the word that he lost. Together to put up a pretty good... But things are continuing to die over in the region of Vino. We talked about the four... Ooh, there's a region called Vino. Let's fix Vino. It's Vino. The region of Venal. We talked about the Four Desire when it died previously. We talked about the Four Desires. Hmm. That's probably not a uh, Four Desire. Four Tizar. I think of this as Fort and the Czar of the Fort. Four Desire when it died previously. We've also since had a couple of Astro Houses die. Well, this time it said Astro Houses, and you're not you're not far. We just have to use the. German version. Astrahas is die, two belonging to boss, and one belonging. That's to the number here. Computer is not wrong, but it is wrong. This is why humans uh, need to work with computers. Yeah, so Key Orion, I'll stop here and take a break for a second. Uh, his mic is cutting out. I don't think it's a connection problem. Uh, I think his gate, we, if you look on your microphone, there is like a push to talk. When you let go of the button, it can instantly clip you or it can hold the gate open for, think of it as a gate that you pass through to go into a yard, right? That's what a gate is. Um, it can, you can hold it open for an additional, we use half a second or 0.4 or 400 milliseconds. So that when you finish saying something, the sound finishes and then the gate closes. If it's too tight, if you have it at zero, as soon as you let, as soon as it registers that the button, you haven't even let it go yet. You're letting it go, but as soon as it hits a certain threshold, your sound is out. If you have it at zero, so you want to use, if you you want to change that inside a Discord, there is a lag time that you can adjust all the way to one second. You don't want it too long because if you're talking and all of a sudden a, there's you know huge noise around you and let, let the button go you're still going to have a second of noise so you don't want it to be too long but about um, you know 30 to 50 percent of a second is it works out information you didn't need to know unless you're broadcasting 
Astra Hoss's die, two belonging to Boss, and one belonging to Truly Fine Corporation. And By the way, Boss here, uh, I, sh I won't do this every time, but I'll do it this time. Boss is actually all caps. Boss, and one belonging to Truly Fine Corporation. And the thing that I wanted to mention about these is if we look at them, they've been stripped of their fittings. And even in the case of the Boss one, stripped of its rigs, if it had. All right, now I now I screwed up because you change it once, and you got to be consistent. So now I got to find all the bosses, and I don't know. There's that many. That's enough that I don't want to do that manually. So I'll correct the transcript with a find and replace, and just do boss, and apply to all. And now I don't have to worry about that guy. I don't have to worry about it, boss. And even in the case of the boss one, stripped of its rigs, if it had any at all, you can tell that it it wasn't anchoring. It wasn't anchored structure because it had its core in it. So these, the owners expected them to die. They might have looked at the timer, looked at what Fraternity or Northern Coalition was going to bring for that fight to decide if it was something they could contest. And when they realized it wasn't, they were okay with letting it die. So this campaign might be winding down. I don't have a proper list of all the Citadels remaining in the region, but we'll have to see. And certainly no large scale or interesting fights to talk about, just a couple of Citadels dying, but I wanted to give you that update on how it's been going. Staying up in the north. So he ends here. Let's fix that. Start a new paragraph here. This is good for reading, right? Like, you know, closed captions don't care. They're not using paragraph structure, but uh, readers will. Let's step back on that and try this again. It's been going. Staying up in the north, let's talk a little bit about Pure Blind, Fade, and Declan. All right, just to show off a little, uh, that gap's just a little too long, right? So we'll use the razor blade, we'll create a splice. Now we can grab the end of this and just shorten it a bit. You still want a nice long gap because he's transitioning thoughts, transitioning topics. You want to give that time and space, just not that much time. How it's been going. Staying up in the north, let's talk a little bit about Pure Blind, Fade, and Declan. So these few regions... Okay, I'm going to be a stickler here uh, because there's a lot to, to cover, but um, Pure Blind, I'll leave it lowercase. Comma, fade. And I don't know if you're European about this or American, but the comma before the and is hotly contested. Uh, so I'm just going to do it the old Oxford way. Um, right here, deckline, I always get wrong. So I'm just going to go to dot land. And that's the wrong dot land. Dot land Eve. Why not? Why not? And I just want to make sure that decline, decline, decline um, is represented correctly. So actually, just go to the universe. Actually, no, let's go back to maps. Here it is. I'm going to copy and paste because I don't, I don't want to mistype it. Uh, there it is. Fade is capitalized. Pure blind is capitalized. This at is actually a comma. A little bit about pure blind, fade, and Declan. So these few regions, the one alliance comes to mind. From There's no lions. There's no lions in space. So that can't be right. This few, those are the one alliances. Those are the alliances. Those are one. What, the, what did he say? The one alliance comes to mind. The one alliance, okay. Gotcha. The one alliance comes to mind from these regions is probably Volta and their Greater Trash Coalition. Not Creator Trash, but Greater. That's a descriptor? and their greater trash. Sorry about this. Greater trash coalition, greater trash something. I always forget what the C stands for and then I get yelled at.
right, I overdid it. So let's get rid of that. Let's just not hyphenate it. Greater Trash Coalition, Greater Trash something. I always forget what the C stands for, and then I get yelled at. But that's okay. GTC, if you will, have been living up in this area. He, it says here, I have been living up in this area is not true. So. If you have will. been living up in this area, toilet paper being uh, a part of that organization, or at least aligned with it to a certain degree. And recently they've been making some moves with their sovereignty, some um, drops in their sovereignty. We talked about when they handed over some sov to Brave, ostensibly, as I understand it, it was sold to Brave. And they've since dropped some more sov over to Brave Collective and even more in the regions of Fade and Declan. If we go to changes here. That's Fade, not Fate. Uh, cool. It was still in my, uh, yeah. Hmm. This is where the, where I screwed up because I decided to put it all in here and this is not, this is now this is screwed up here on the timeline. You'll see it doesn't, it doesn't work. Regions of fade and Declan. If we go to changes. Because if I de delete and Declan, it'll delete that sound and I don't want that sound deleted. Uh, so maybe if I just delete this and backspace, it'll figure out that I want to keep the sound and not the, uh, there's a stubborn little comma in there. If we go to changes here. I think this works. The regions of Fade and Declan. If we go to changes here. Hey, Mark Porter. Thank you very much. That's kind of cool. Mike Porter. Uh, he called him Mark, I think. Uh, Uh, Mike, he's a good guy, so we'll make sure his name is said correctly. Hey, Mark Porter, thank you very much. I appreciate that. They dropped all of their holdings in Declan and in Fade. Okay, but I'm going to take that out and they see if dropped that works. All of their Let's listen to it. Regions of Fade and Declan, if we go to changes here, they dropped all of their holdings in Declan and in fade. It kind of works, uh, would have worked either way, I think. Holdings in Declan and in fade. And if I just quickly check to see who it went over to. Long gap. Uh, also, it's worth it went over to. Correct. Went over to, and then it kind of gets cut. It's no period, really. Let's look at that timeline. How big is that gap? That's big. So let's just splice it. Shorten it. Uh, right about there. You can actually visually see time on a timeline. Once you get really good editors, you can totally say that's a beat. They call it in the film business that I don't work it anymore. A beat is like when an actor has a rhythm, that's, that's a beat. It's like a note. So let's see if this space here after he goes silent makes sense. Check to see who it went over to. It went over to Volta. So this is... No, didn't work. Do you know why? Somebody tell me why that doesn't work. Went over to... Class? <laughs> um, because he needs thinking space. He doesn't have it. He actually asks himself a question. He's looking something up. He needs to find it. Then he needs to answer. So he can't just have the answer right away. Otherwise he wouldn't have needed that pause. So we will still shorten it, but we'll just make it quicker. Just quickly check to see who it went over to. 
it went over to Volta. So this is an interesting thing to keep an eye on. I'm not really sure what's going on with toilet paper at the moment. <laughs> stupid names and stupid games, but uh, that would have been funny in uh, 2020, right? And right about now, two years ago. What's happening with toilet paper? It's disappearing off the shelves. Going on with toilet paper at the moment. The speculation that I had pre-show, was just discussing a little bit with the group, is that toilet paper, they are the kind of alliance that you, you see as a fighters. Fighters, conquerors, they enjoy combat. They're not really interested in settling down. So my running theory is that the space that they had acquired, they acquired because they were interested in fighting for it. They were interested in getting the fights but now that those fights have concluded, they don't really care for the space. It is an administrative cost they don't wish to have. But because they are also significantly slimming down their holdings in pure blind, I'm also curious if maybe they're prepping to move or to, to do something else, maybe realign their goals as an alliance. So we'll have to keep an eye on them and see if that trend continues and what happens there. But current state of pure blind, you can see Brave is picking up more space mostly from toilet paper and toilet paper's holdings in Fade and Declan have all been shifted to other groups. With Might as well fix this, Declan. Well, it's not, not really, really many more, but we still have Decline, Decline here. And see why this gets tedious. Holdings in Fade and Declan have all been shifted to other groups within the GTC. Just a little long. We'll do people uh, a solid and tighten this up. That's my first use of the word solid. Um, anybody know how you spell alrighty? I think it's like almighty, almighty <laughs> comes from the same region. So we'll just do that. Alrighty, moving right along. We've got some wormhole news, just hidden all areas of the map. I'm even going to talk about high sec today. I forgot. Did they kill his, uh, his home, home style vibe? Yes or no? Should we kill alrighty? Shall we put Alrighty under the sword? Uh, my West Coast elitism is kicking in. I'm going to say yes. Let's see if that works. Groups within the GTC. Moving right along, we've got some wormhole news. Just hidden all areas of the map. I'm even going to talk about high sec today. I forgot to put it in my notes, but I. About high sec today. I forgot to put it in my notes, but I don't want to forget to talk about it. There was a fight in a seat. All right. Um, when you're doing, by the way, what's so great about Artemis is that this thing understands what he's saying, which means he's speaking very clearly using simple words and the transcript is almost perfect except for the Eve language. So it's an incredibly easy job cleaning this up. Um, but when you're in front of the camera, not bit, and at the same time, when you're in front of a camera and you're needing to get information, but you need to keep the audience engaged, there's some filler, which I've done a lot of. And this is where we have to make an editorial decision. Are we better served without the filler? So people feel like there's, there's a better ratio of noise to information. So he says, moving right along, we've got wormhole news. Check. Uh, but then he says, uh, just hidden all over the map. Uh, I'm even going to talk about high sec today. Mm, 
that kind of works. I forgot to put it in my notes. Nobody needs to know that, but I don't want to forget to talk about it. I think what we'll do, we have some wormhole news. Let's see what this sounds like. There was a fight. So, punctuation. Let's see what that looks like. Moving right along, we've got some wormhole news. There was a fight in a C2 wormhole with test alliance, please ignore. I think the last time we talked about worm. Oh, God. This is, I hope this is the only time test comes up. I mean, it's close to right, but. I'll just copy that in case I need it again. And let me look up test. Ooh. Nope, it's good. It's all part of contest, so. No need to worry. Wormhole. With test alliance, please ignore. I think the last time we talked about wormholes, it was again a situation of. Back. Bull sec. That's a new one, right? Ends by the B. That's what happened there. But bull sec sounds like. I think I'm going to start calling null sec bull sec. Because it's close enough to ball sack that it's insulting. It's close enough to bullshit. It's insulting. But then again, it could be a compliment because bulls are strong, huge beasts that can't be stopped. Again, a situation of null sec groups venturing into J space and uh, not having a fun time. In this particular case, Test had a couple of Fortazars up in J123555. This is really cool. This transcript is awesome that this computer generated. Uh, in this case, though, we're talking about wormholes, so we don't need, you know, it's like, uh, it's not a phone number or anything. So let's just take that out. And that way the transcript is correct. Fortazars up in J123555, a C2 wormhole, and they got evicted. Plain and simple. Wolves amongst strangers came on in and decided to reinforce those Fortazars. They set up hole control so the defenders couldn't get much of a fleet in. Killed. I'm being picky, but hole control is hole control and it's hyphenated. Thought. Fortazars, they set up hole control so the defenders couldn't get much of a fleet in killed the Fortazars, and got a ton of loot, as I understand it. The battle reports altogether are... Okay, so a lot of grammar here. All right, so they set up whole control, and that is continuation, so the defenders couldn't get much of a fleet in. Killed the fort, not Ford. They didn't gas a car. Uh, I guess we could say fort, but no, I think it's fort. Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. Fort's not a pronoun, but fort is our is, but this is short for fort is our, but fort kind of works. I'm going to say a uh, capital since it's short. Did I miss a Fortazar up here somewhere? To reinforce those Fort... Let's reinforce see. those Fortazars. Thank you, I missed that. Yes. I think it's plural. Thank you. Then it's a pole control. Let's see how this plays. To reinforce those Fortazars. They set up pole control so the defenders couldn't get much of a fleet in killed the Fortazars, and got a ton of loot, as I understand it. Good. And again, just a Q and a tap, and that becomes lowercase s, which is cool. 
But now we got to clear out this and it should re it should auto capitalize but sometimes it doesn't. All right, let's see if this works. Understand it. Uh, the battle reports altogether are around 100 bill of stuff killed. Oh, what happened there? Around 100 bill of stuff killed, but there's a lot more that was dropped and looted because in wormhole space, unlike Nullsec, there is no Okay, so Nosec has come up a lot at this point. I should have yeah, so it's going to come up again and again and again. Let's get rid of that right now. I don't like that one anyway. Not bullsec, but nullsec. Space, unlike nullsec, there is no asset safety. So anything in a citadel when it dies, drops as loot, whether the structure is abandoned or not. So we had those. Just an interesting thing to keep an eye on. I feel kind of bad for tests because... A rare test. Test, because I'm of two minds. This doesn't seem like it was a an alliance shank sanctioned activity. C2 space is not particularly profitable to live. Hey there. Uh, it's totally natural, but we might as well remove it because I think it works without. Let's this see. doesn't seem like it was an alliance shank sanctioned activity. C shank. An alliance shank. People know, people who've been watching the show know that I like shanks, um, especially when I'm wearing my prison prisoner outfit. Um, but we could probably take the shank out of this one. Seemed like it was an alliance sanctioned activity. C2 space is not particularly profitable to live in. So it's not the sort of thing where you as an alliance would be like, hey, let's set up an area here where our members can go and farm some ISK if Nullsec is unavailable to them. Some ISK? Don't even ask. Is unavailable to them. But just perhaps some... Let's just make this... Uh, if somebody's reading this, it needs to make sense too. Them. But just perhaps some, some well-to-do members of test who had some assets in there but they became targets just due to the the name if you will okay if you will at this point uh not necessary let's assume they will i don't know what this is uh it's asking me to correct something here but i'm not sure why And I'll take the alrighty out of there. Gotta, gotta pray to the alrighty. I'm sorry, anybody religious? Uh, no, no uh, joke intended. Okay, let's listen to the end of this. Perhaps some some well-to-do members of Test who had some assets in there but they became targets just due to the, the name. Well, that ends, or no, it doesn't. I like that transition at all. Do we have any room to, no, we don't have room to play there. Do we have room here? I think we have room here. So we'll just, Same. Well, super fast. So that's unnatural, it doesn't feel right. Uh, we may not be able to escape all, all righty. The, oh, right. the name well that and yeah it's unnatural right like that's jarring so we'll bring this back name if you will well that and oh if you will was there hmm this is great if you will then pause then all right then more so we can actually carve out some silence that we'll use. We'll keep that silence. We'll carve out alrighty, or the if you will. We'll just get rid of the if you will. So that's gone. We'll keep silence. And now we can stretch that silence out. And this should work. We had some assets in there. But they became targets just due to the, the name. Well, that ends, or no. A little more time there and we're good. This is a very lucky break right here. The name. Well, that ends, or no, it doesn't.
let's let's get the high sec stuff going. I want to talk about high sec and specifically, I got to find. I knew this was going to happen. It said high sex. No, no, no. It's just a matter of time. Let's get that high sex stuff going. Not on this show. You won't. Uh, no, nobody. Uh, I want to talk about high sex. The song. Let's talk about high sex. It really should be uh, H-I-G-H, but I think people understand. All right, so this is going to take some doing. Well, that ends, or no, it doesn't. Let's let's get the high sec stuff going. I want to talk about high sec, and specifically, I got to find the battle report. So give me one moment. Okay, so we can erase that moment because he doesn't really need it in editing. But he will need some time, but we're going to take away this gap. Let's make sure there's enough enough finding space. Find the battle report. Here it is. Nope. Got to fix that. I got to find the battle report, so give me one moment. Here it is. And dial it back just a little. You, you just need enough to get to the point. Significant battle took place over what I understand is the war headquarters for the war of 10K. Lost my place. Oh, this, this re-edited the text, I think. Did you see the text move when I was editing down here? I may have... Uh... Specifically, I got to find the battle report. So give me yeah, one it moment. Did. It merged it, not me, because I was tightening the, the actual timeline. It went ahead and merged the paragraph. So that's why I couldn't find it. Here we go. I want to talk about high sec and specifically, I got to find the battle report. So give me one moment. Here it is. All right. We talked two or three weeks ago about a war going on between Bjorn B and his 10.k corp. Let's get B his due. He lost a couple E's there. Bjorn B and his 10.k corp. 10.k. Uh, I'm going to leave that for transcript reasons. CC, uh, closed captioning reasons that will that will make sense. And he actually did say those words, which I think is technically correct, like for closed caption, not necessarily for the essay part. Is 10.k corp versus Omega and their uh, high sec Poco empire. And then Poco, as we know, is an acronym. Poco empire. And that's Fighting has escalated, and a really significant battle took place over what I understand is the war headquarters for the war of 10k. And they. Needs to be here. Well, now we have a problem, right? Because we need to be consistent. 10.k. God, I hate Eve when it does this. These computer guys and their dots. Yeah, that'll make sense. Okay. And they, they lost the battle, of course, but the battle report was interesting. We had just absolutely huge numbers fighting against 10k here. How many 10Ks are we dealing with here? Enough. Let's fix it. Okay. We had just absolutely huge numbers 
fighting against 10k here. The vast majority coming from Wrecking Machine, who are an interesting group. I want to pull up their website because it looks really cool while I talk about them. Okay. Well, uh, let's see what he says here. Do they have... He's thinking. Where can I find... He's still looking. Because it is great. There it is. Okay, so we'll come in here, use the razor blade. This is when he starts. So really, we just want to trim down, trim back, whatever you want to call it. All this extra looking time. Give him enough time to actually look and then start again. I want to pull up their website because it looks really cool while I talk about them. It's really cool while I talk about them. There it is. Just a fantastic design, but they also have an interesting style. So I just noticed this isn't really changing. That's odd. Did I miss a refresh or something? Maybe he froze. Maybe the recording froze. Okay. Vast majority coming from Wrecking Machine, who are an interesting group. I want to pull up their website because it looks really cool while I talk about them. There it is. Just a fantastic design, but they also have an interesting style. So Wrecking Machine became well known back when Citadels were coming out and just being absolutely spammed everywhere because they took it upon themselves to sort of be like the cleaning crew of HiSec. They took it upon themselves to be the cleaning crew of high sec and I'm not certain this will sound good. So I'll show you how I would finesse it if it's even possible. Everywhere because they took it upon themselves to be the cleaning crew of high sec. See how bad that sounds? It's horrible. So we will try to finesse it and if we can't we'll revert it. Um but there's crossfading. You can do audio and video. Something's wrong with the video. I'm kind of concerned about it. I think I'll have to look at the original. But what I want to do is crossfade. And so this is, if you just drag these little bars here, it creates a, a, an audio crossfade, which means you fade over. And it may smooth out that abrupt change, but the words are so tight that they're going to be fading into each other. So this is going to sound weird too, I think. Let's see. Absolutely spammed everywhere because they took it upon themselves to be the cleaning crew of HiSec. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, do you guys like it? I don't like it. So I couldn't finesse it. Too many words in there. We are going to undo. Fix HiSec, though. because they took it upon themselves to sort of be like the cleaning crew of HiSec. They would go around and just kill Citadel after Citadel after Citadel, and they would take the loot and pay their members for participating, to the extent where they would even say like, hey, you don't have to be a full-fledged member of our group. Stick an ult in. I'm going to take out like... Uh, let's... Be correct and put quotations. Whoa, wait a minute. Is it comma apostrophe or comma comma quotes or quotes comma? I think it's comma quotes. It's always a tough one. And I think it ends right here. Would even say, hey, you don't have to be. I didn't like that. It cut out something. 
like. Well, I gotta live with the like, I think, in this case. They would even say like, hey, you don't have to be a full-fledged member of our group. Stick an alt in and just... It's an alt, not... Uh, you don't have to be a full-fledged member of our group. Stick an alt in and just join it on some timers. So they had great doctrines. They had alpha skill plans for flying. Put that together. They had alpha skill plans for flying a phantasm. It was just amazing. Oh. Doctrine. That's a little too long. Let's fix that because I think he finds it. And there you don't need any thinking time because he's surprised that he's found what he's looking for. You can make that real instant. And that would be one of these. Doctrines. They had alpha skill plans for flying a phantasm. It was just amazing. Oh, thank you for that call out. We have since fixed the gray screen. Don't tell him, maybe he won't notice. Come on now, don't be mean. Okay. Anyway, now oh. you all can see the, the beautiful web design here. Okay, so there wasn't a freezing screen, but there was something wrong with the website he was going to. Um, but he says, don't be mean here. Period. Uh, there is a gap of time. In here. They had alpha skill plans for flying. Okay, so here's where there's gaps. The gray screen. Don't tell him, maybe he won't notice. Come on now, don't be mean. So let's shorten this guy here. Notice, come on now, don't be mean. <laughs> okay. Anyway, now you all can see the, the beautiful web design here. Where was I? Wrecking Machine, right. So they were a fantastic group. Let's do some quick capitalizations. Wrecking Machine, right. So they were a fantastic group. Judas is the sort of the figurehead of the group, if you will, known for his alliance. I think we can kill, if you will. It's uh, it's now a word whisker officially. And I think it's pretty easy to take out, unlike the likes, those are hard. Sort of the figurehead of the group, known for his alliance tournament piloting, or alliance tournament ship piloting, excuse me, and low sec piracy, but just an interesting group all, to, all around, and they participated in this in a pretty significant way, bringing an exceptionally large Ferox fleet, which you don't even see on the battle report unless you expand everything else. And if we look at it, these are all like low skill point Ferox's, or at least the story that I'm told is they were all low skill point pilots or... Couple changes here. Ferox's. Two Fs? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. I think it's one. Yeah, it's one. Ferroxes. 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 It reminds me of Gollum for some reason. The way he talks. Ferroxes. Uh, something else going on here. Let's see. Point Ferroxes, or at least the story that I'm told is they were all low skill point pilots or high sec pilots who were relatively. High sec pilots who were relatively. Whoa. High sec pilots. You can't type. You can take out spaces, but you can't type. So you have to literally say, I want to use. 
the uh, I want to change the transcript, and then it lets you. Skill point pilots or high sec pilots who are relatively new to combat, but they were all ushered together and taught how to be F1 monkeys for this particular fight, ended up winning the... One monkey? That's what kind of monkey. Might as well fix the ferox dice. Any more of these guys? Couple, so we'll just fix it. The Feroxes plus Apocalypses and Navy Apocalypses from Black Flag were fighting against Ishtars from 10k. A fantastic doctrine choice. Ishtars. Ishtars from 10k. A fantastic doctrine choice. I think I talked about it a little bit in the past about how the, the drone assist mechanics plus just the engagement profile of the Ishtar makes it a great choice if you have to deal with a, a lot of different factors, especially in high sec when there aren't bombs, there aren't smart bombs, defanging is significantly more difficult. Oh, love that Eve talk, man. This guy is the best. One of the best. One of my favorites to listen to. High sec when there aren't bombs, there aren't smart bombs. Defanging is significantly more difficult. So I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the the Ishtar as a doctrine choice. It just unfortunately didn't. Work. Not the HDR. Let's fix that. <clears throat> okay. I think you guys got the uh, idea why it takes a while to like clean all this up, but it's really cool that this tool. God, has it been an hour and a half? Told you it would take a while. This is only 30 minutes I'm working on, and I'm about 60% of the weight. Remember, I did a whole oh, hour before this. <clears throat> so it takes about five times as long to do this sort of thing. Um, but what's so good is you get, you get a script that um, you could read as an article should you want to, should you need to. That script can become closed captioning. That script can become other languages because of translator stuff. So this is a great tool. And at the same time, what I will finish with is an edited video. So um, this doesn't have fancy, you know, crazy filters or anything like that. But when you finish, you can actually export or publish you can publish to your own page, um, sorry, you can publish to a page, which actually sets up an internet page, not on YouTube, so we could literally walk away from YouTube if we wanted to and just create these kinds of pages. Um, and it would have the video and it would have the transcript and it would do what we're seeing here. It would follow the words as you're watching the, the video. That's not really the direction I, I would want to go for many reasons. Uh, you can do a snippet for an audiogram for like Instagram, basically, where it puts the text on top of a picture. And uh, it's those you want really short, short things for that. YouTube, um, you can export the text. Here you export the subtitles and you can convert those subtitles to uh, the .srt file. That is for closed captioning. Didn't mean to do that. Um, but here's a really cool part. Uh, you can just put out the audio, which we would do for the podcast. Um, we could uh, do video, GIF, whatever. That's short stuff. But what's really cool here, and, it, and it's hit and miss, unfortunately. I'm on a PC here, um, and it didn't work last time unless I was on a Mac. Uh, final Cut. You can spit out a Final Cut video, and then you could put effects on it. Then you could put a you know, your credit roll at the end, or you could put a, you know, whatever you want. Um, you can also do Audition, which is an audio editing program from Adobe, or use its video editing program, Premiere. Uh, Pro Tools too, if you're into that. But the point is, you can output to further editing should you want to. And I think that's what's powerful about this tool. It's not an all-in, it's not an all-in-one. It's almost like a text video preparation tool. It just does editing too which is the amazing part.
But that's actually not the most amazing thing about this product. What it can also do is it can learn your voice and it can talk in your voice, which is crazy, right? Uh, it's unbelievable. But if you have a script and you want this to read it in your voice, uh, the artificial intelligence um, can learn your voice and then talk in your voice, which is so dangerous. Uh, you have to give permission. You have to give legal permission to do that. So you can't just, I can't just get Ashtarothy's voice, give it a script, have it read in Ashtarothy's voice without getting into some trouble there. Uh, so you, you have to be the one to give it permission to do that. You feed it a paragraph. I could just feed it this video for Artemis or have Artemis do it and just say, just pick three or four paragraphs and it will, it will use those paragraphs to figure out his voice. This tool is called Descript. It's about a year old, a year and a half old. I think it's a game changer for some people. Short form, it's great. I don't know if it's a year old, it could be longer. I think professional uh, podcasts have been using this for a while. And uh, it's expensive. It's not that expensive. It's expensive enough that it needs to be used uh, to, you know, it's like to get all the, all the features that you need, it's like $30 a month uh per person i think you can have other people edit not edit you can have other people read and sign off and stuff like that but every editor is like 30 bucks a month yeah this tool is unlike anything i have ever seen it is literally a game changer because it allows it allows editing as as you've been watching it and the video is being edited so now if you go back and watch the video the video says what's on paper here on the screen. And uh, I'm just a much better editor on paper than I am on a timeline listening for audio cues. And it takes me three times longer to do this on, a, on an actual. So absolute game changer. I don't think there's a referral program, but um, I would refer this to anybody uh, that is doing this kind of work. Okay, another thing is, I, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm, for a long time my career was um, in entertainment design for film studios, and I worked on uh, a lot of blockbuster artwork from X-Men to uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen to The Day After Tomorrow to King Kong, like big pictures... I didn't, I didn't make the art for the big pictures. I worked on artwork for the big pictures, derivative products, um, also original art, original campaign, you know, every, I could talk about film design if you guys want at some point, but what a big movie will do, this is a little sidebar, is they have a schedule to meet, so they can't afford to have a studio uh, screw it up one studio a studio might be 10 to 20 to 40 people it might even be 60 70 designers the really big studios right but they can get as small as four people very small two people um if they're good and 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 all these artists are always like getting so good they break off and form their own studio so studios are constantly coming and going coming and going and so to be a really good designer for film you know, you might work at a studio for a year, that studio might fall apart because certain lead designers leave and then you go to a different studio and you just kind of surf the studio scene. And that's what I did for a while. Um, and during that time, Photoshop was, if you're a chef, Photoshop was your knife. Like it was, it was all your knives because it was, it's a lot of photo compos compositing. Hey, thanks for the raid. Large caliber gaming. Uh, what we're talking about now to get you caught up is editing program called Descript, which you can edit text to edit your video. You don't actually have to edit the video directly, which is really cool. It's a great tool. Look it up. It's called Descript. And now I'm about to switch gears from video from editing video to um, Photoshop. Photoshop, again, was the tool to use, but now it's so powerful, so big and very expensive because it moved to a subscription model that this is not, 
I do not recommend learning Photoshop anymore. Adobe will kill me if they hear me saying that, right? Because they need to have a future. And if kids stop using their stuff, uh, that's bad, really bad for them. And they know that. But I have uh, seen the arrival of artificial intelligence. And I'll just show you Canva. Does anybody know Canva? Do you guys use it? Um, let's log in here. Uh, I'm going to use, okay, actually, I'm, I'm going to use the uh, a different account. So let's go to talking in stations. Bring this up and we'll go to Canva. I just, if you're making podcasts, if you're making anything, you just shouldn't bother with Photoshop. It's way too much way too much power. You don't need it. Uh, so this is something I, I, I push as well for other people. And uh, it's quite cool, very easy to use, very lightweight. It's free. Um, you can get a paid version or, you know, it's a web app. It's, it doesn't have a desktop. It's just phenomenal for everything. If you want to make a resume, use Canva. If you want to make a thumbnail for YouTube, use Canva. If you want to make a brochure, use Canva. There is no reason not to use this if you want to make artwork for your productions. Leave Photoshop for professionals now. The world has changed and artificial intelligence has made things so easy now. So Descript, artificial intelligence at work, doing a lot of the weightlifting. Um, Canva, same thing, but for graphic design. So let's look at um, just a thumbnail. We'll just, here, this thumbnail here. I'll just duplicate it. Uh, I don't really care to keep originals, but. So I had a show where I had, I'll deconstruct it. Hmm, let's see. Let me actually do this for. Uh, Let's see, does he pop back up? Yeah, he does. Okay, so here's Artemis, right? I need a picture of him. Is going to be handling this. Is going. Is going. Is going. Okay. And I would do this off YouTube or somewhere where it's a little easier to control. Uh, what I'm looking for is a frame. This is a little slow, so I wouldn't really want to use this. And I want to catch him in some expressive way that's not too compromising, right? He's about to turn that off. Where he's not blurry, where he's looking at the camera, et cetera. Or we could just use this. Okay, before we lose a lot of time. I'm just going to screenshot this. I work on Mac usually, usually but... Uh, so the screenshot's different. So I'll copy that. Let's put this away. Going back to Canva. Uh, let's actually go start a new one. I'm going to drop that in. And now I have a picture of him, but I don't want all that extra stuff around, right? I want to do stuff like this that looks kind of silly and fun because that's the moon or the style. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to edit this image. And I'm going to, it's a BG background remover. Just one button. It's rather quick, too. And it just, I mean, artificial intelligence just mapped his alpha. Like, I won't, I won't go into explaining that, but in the professional world, that takes a long time. And it just did it in seconds. And that's when I was like, this thing is amazing. But it didn't do it right because it kind of cut off his shoulder and he looks a little slighter than he did before. So I can restore... Uh, I'll make the brush size about this big. Show the original image so I can map back in his shoulder. And I really don't care if there's his words there. So I'll make it smaller and then I'll reverse and do erase. And I'll just take off this stuff right here. Uh, I don't really care about this black, so I'm going to just take that off. Okay. And I will hit done. I think it's around here. Here it is. And so I got a shoulder back. I may cut it off anyway, but. And so now I can take uh, Artemis 
and uh, put an effect on him, just like a... Well, first of all, I can shape... I'll adjust it last, but next thing I want to do is just put a glow on him, but I don't want the glow to be... Um, I'll, I'll just hit this, and so now I get to play with the glow. You can't actually see it. Uh, I'll grow it. I'll change its color to white. Now you'll see that there's a glow there. The blur factor, uh, the transparency factor, etc. But uh, for this, I actually don't want any blur, and that does that fancy outline thing that you know people like. I don't love that this is here. I can't clone it out. This is one thing that it doesn't do. But I, I like the chemistry of his shoulder, him looking down. That's what I'll keep. Just move this here. And then I have to think, what was this episode about? And I just need to find anything, right? Um, well, here's the cool thing. This has a huge library. So if I just want, like, star field, it has all kinds of stuff you can use. And this goes, this is endless, right? You can just keep scrolling and scrolling for hours um, until you find something. But it's an incredible use of stock libraries that are paid for. So if you if you pay for an account, you get access to all this rights free stuff. And literally, you just drag and drop. Say, yeah, just make that my background. And now you have something. Uh, that's a star field, but it looks like granite. That's okay with me. You could do something just a little more obvious like this. Replace background. It's just that simple. It's unbelievable. I used to hunt all over through... Um, I would just do image hunts through Google looking for something. And when I found it, I would take it. But I didn't want to use somebody else's material, so I would have to alter it. Because I didn't want to mess with anybody's rights or you know screw with anything or whatever. So I would have to alter it. So just searching for the right image you know, in Eve was incredibly time consuming. So making art was about, <laughs> it was about 20 minutes of hunting for three or four ingredients. And then it was about five minutes of Photoshop work for me. So the Photoshop was just like, you know, I was like a chef, right? Could just be done. But I'd ha going to the store and getting your ingredients so you could have that five minute chop session uh, that's where all the time went. But here, it's all here for you. And if you need custom stuff, you could see I just took his head and I um, gave you know, it's authentic to this video. So they know what to expect. Uh, you can also adjust this if, if something's a little blurry, which happens a lot. Uh, of course, you can adjust the contrast, the brightness and all this stuff. But you can actually do the opposite of blur, which is to sharpen. And now he looks like he's in focus. That's just amazing. Again, all this you could do in Photoshop, but it takes you a lot of learning. It takes you a lot of time. It's not simple. And you could just grab this, take it to Photoshop, fix it, and then bring it back in here and, and do the assembly here. That would be great. Uh, in this case, I may want to... I don't really know what this episode was about, but now I need a headline or something to catch. And so what I'll do with text is just pick one of these. You change the words, change the font. Um, somebody give me a headline. <laughs> I'll just take this one here. So I, I like this style, but I don't really like that shine, shine, shine thing. So I'll just uh, ungroup this, take out two of the shines. And then I'll say something else like, you know, what was this episode about? Um... We'll just do generic. Right, change the color because we don't want. I, and this is what's great. I love this part about uh, artificial intelligence. It looks at the picture and it says, "Here's your palette." Look, it looked at the background artwork and said, "Here's your palette." That's brilliant. So I can always match my palette. Now that makes sense, right? That bright yellow clashed, but because it is understanding the color scheme, it can create a palette for you. That's a big deal, um, even if it doesn't seem like it is. So I can. Here's his skin tone palette which is great. And then you have basic colors, which you can use. Um, yeah, this is really, this is where artificial intelligence is really like, really, really convenient for people like us that wanna do multimedia and then do marketing or presentation and, and even the broadcast channels. Like the amount of professional 
multimedia development that has come into the living room over the last 15 years is astounding. But artificial intelligence is an incredible leap. Incredible leap. And that's only in the last, uh, I want to say the last two years. So I'll just, and you can do this all day long with uh, fonts. Like I, I like that sparkle thing, but I'm not feeling that little font thing. I want to do something funny here. Mm. It's a different sparkle. Mm. Let's just open that up so you can see it, shrink it. Look how simple that is. On Photoshop, it's not even that simple. You have to use a command T to transform and then you have to like grab it. It's just, it's just not that simple. Um, even though it's simple. So let's see if I can find, um, I don't need anything fancy here. So, uh, let's do, I just need something fun. I'll change the color in a second, but I need this to make sense. This is all on a web, you know, like that's what's crazy about this. Uh, we'll change both these two. Again, that palette will hold it for you. This is so great, watch. If I hit that, I'll be like, what was that purple I used up here? Oh yeah, it's right there. But you know, I think I'll go a different. And then if I don't like it, I'll just hit my own color and it puts me right on the scale. So I need this to be brighter, mm, darker. Okay, I, I don't wanna use any of those. I need something that is the opposite. So let's go with orange. Well, that's a purple, so the opposite's actually green, believe it or not. But green doesn't fit my palette. Is there something else I could use? Mm, that kind of works. You guys may not think so, but it technically works. Joker, green, purple. You think that's by accident? No. They're opposing colors. Let's just go white. And that glow is too hot, so you can adjust the glow. That's right. Adjust the effect. Let's see. Click here is the text color. And I think I need to widen this up. It's gonna be right here in this menu. But if I widen this up, here's the effect. So you have these effects to work with. And this is just too bright, it's overcoming the... Uh... That's like a classic 70 or 50s, 60s style. The font is making it look that way. I just... What is this one? That's a new one. Oh, wild. That is a new one. Send it back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that. You can do the... Uh... Remember, it has your palette, so you can always adjust. Why not? We'll have some fun. A little bit of transparency. You can also uh, uh, do the transparency. Here's a little trick. Whenever you're trying to make something work, and he has flesh tones, and this is a cold purple blues and you know, cold space, what you need to do is um, merge them a little. So what we used to do when we were... Uh, working on artwork is we'd throw a couple layers of color, just solid color, and we'd fade those back way down to like two or 3%. And they compounded to help it fit into the color of the background. You don't have to do all that anymore. Here's a shortcut. You don't have to put any color on top of this guy, Artemis, to make him fit into this. Kind of clashes, right? All you need to do is take him and reduce his opacity by like two or 3%. Now, I don't want to see stars or that star in where his nose is, right? So I need to overcome that.
But at 98%, I overcome that sort of thing. Right about 98, I can't go any less. And that's actually different than 100%. You could tell it just takes a little bit of that yellow edge off him. This works much better when you're not over a star field, when you're over something else. But that's about as low as I can go because of the stars will start coming through him, and I don't want to do that. Um, this is not a good program for editing uh, tone, because if you look at all the things that you can edit on, on this guy, tone is just going to blow him out. See how it takes the whole picture and changes it? And that's an easy way to burn it out. But in this case, actually, I like this because now he matches better. I can put him up actually at 100% now. I just don't want him to look dead, right? Because blue uh, is cold. I'll give him his, 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 his colors again. All right, and that's it. Now I was messing around and I was showing you what I was doing and I was making decisions in front of you, but in actuality, you saw how simple it was as I was just throwing out ideas the execution part of this, in other words, if I knew what I wanted to do and I went back and just did it, it would take seconds. Now, one thing you can do for comedy, comedy and action need to be tilted in order to show dynamic movement, right? Uh, when, every, when something's flat, that's uh, a neutral position, but when you twist it, all of a sudden you have energy. You don't have to do that, but that's kind of how it works. And with him, he's kind of reacting. You want chemistry, too, so he's kind of going to react to uh, that energy. And so here's the easy part. So I'm done, and this looks good enough and all that. So download just this one picture. And uh, within seconds, it drops. And that's all compiled. This is a ready-to-go JPEG that you just upload, and it's the correct size for YouTube. It's amazing. Artificial intelligence is making it so easy. You still have to have design sense, right? There's no accounting for taste, but that can be taught. That's a skill. Because there's rules to nature. Uh, there's... Um, there's a lot of rules to proportions that are just, uh, you know, that's what you learn. If you learn, if you if you take a graphic design course, if you want to be a graphic designer, what what they teach you is important, and you'll never look at at a tree the same way. If you learn how films are made, you'll never look at a film the same way. You'll be you'll know exactly what they're trying to do. You'll know how they're manipulating you, how you're why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Uh, same thing with graphic design. Not the same thing. Different with graphic design in that you learn laws of design and so you can apply them. And I'm talking about grids. I'm talking about vanishing point. I'm talking about color spectrum. I'm talking about repetition and position. These all have laws. And the artists that are great are people who know those laws so well that they can literally compose above and beyond what the law says you can do. But an amateur doesn't know the laws will put stuff together that does not go together. And that's uh, pretty easy to see because it doesn't feel right. Because graphics and graphic design is actually a form of communication. And one last thing about graphic design. Communication is uh, a coder and a decoder and so if you're somebody who needs to, somebody uh, in order to send the information that can be decoded properly, you need to know your audience. And that's true for most mediums, right? Like even talking in stations needs to know their audience because we can very easily talk about stuff they're not interested in. We can very easily talk to them the wrong way. Uh, fans who kind of know what the product is and, and all that. All right. Two hours. That was a lot longer than I expected to do. Uh, you guys have any questions, let me know. Again, Canva, if you want to do artwork, it's free, I think. Um, there is a paid plan, but it's very reasonable. They are so smart in making it reasonable. This is just, if you want to do your resume, do it, do it here. They have, I can't believe I'm selling it this hard because I'm, I'm doing it for you guys, not for Canva. 
I don't know Canva for anything and I don't, um, I'm not sponsored. Hey, this is not any kind of video like that, but Canva has templates. Uh, look at this. They have, um, I mean, it won't do a website for you, but look at how good these website templates are. Um, the whole thing is put together in a way that uh, you can touch it and fix it and customize it. You can't, this is not programmed, but it's a design choice. And if you give this to a programmer, they might be able to design off it. But I'll just give you an example. Um, see something that's a little ambitious rather than just the simple stuff. Uh, this is kind of basic design, but uh, let's uh, this. All I want to show you is the extension of the template because the template, so you customize this template. Uh, the template comes with all kinds of sub pages. Not in this case. By the way, you can do animation. So if you wanted to um, bring some stuff in, it's just like, it's very basic. And whenever you use basic stuff, if you don't do it with taste, it looks just like forced, you know? Like uh, everything has to work together in order to, to work. And so these effects may not all work with the design. So be careful when you use animations, but you can, <laughs> that option's there. Uh, one more thing I'll do, if you're doing a presentation, for instance, uh, let's just do a, a basic, oh, that was a blank. Here, here are presentation templates. Now what's cool about these is they should have multi, here we go. You have multiple pages, right? They don't design one page. They design an entire uh, style sheet, style, not style sheet, but style to an entire presentation. So you can literally put that down, create a new slide, put that down, create a new slide, put that down, create a new slide, put that down and they have like, you know, an option for everything, just like normal templates. Yeah, check it out. I think uh, here, here's the thing that, this is the last thing I'll talk about and I'll, and I'll wrap up. <clears throat> One of the things that's really cool is these templates are getting better because designers are contributing, you know, and all that. You won't find garbage in here at all. There's, everything is good. It's very good. Templates have different sizes, but let's go over here to, Templates for business, personal resume. This blew me away, right? Because resumes are hard. They're really hard. Um, but look at look at all these designs. The art of a art of a resume is incredibly difficult. Uh, you don't want to overdo it at all. You got to be very sensitive to that. But let's face it, uh, resumes, uh, communication is changing on the front of resumes. But if you want something conservative like this, you could say, yeah, I want to customize that template. And you just put in your data. And again, you have a lot of options uh, to choose from here if you want to do something else. I'm just saying, uh, right now, what Canva is doing, uh, they're what they're doing is they're trying to provide an incredible service for hardly any money or free. They will do that for a number of years and then they will start to charge or they may start to advertise or they may do what Discord did and not really want to interrupt the process too much. So you notice Discord's monetization strategy, very light touch, way different than YouTube, which is like commercial, 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 commercial. But they didn't have commercials. YouTube didn't have commercials for the first year at least. I think I was on YouTube and there were no commercials for years. And then there was like, a, you know, just a little banner at the bottom. There was no commercials, just a little banner at the bottom every once in a while. And over the 10, 15 years, YouTube has gotten to the point now where they stick you with two, three, four commercials. Um, that's how radio stations work. That's how all these things work. They, they bring you in, they build you up. They build up your loyalty, then they sneak in their money-making opportunities. That's what Amazon, that's what, uh, did Amazon do that? I think so. All those companies do that. That's how they work. But so basically the first few years of a mind-blowing product, get in on that. That's good stuff. All right, guys, it's been kind of cool hanging out with you, uh, but I got to go. It's my birthday. It's actually my birthday today. So I'm going to go and have some fun. Uh, 
and turn all this off. Plus, I got to finish uh, Artemis's uh, podcast. Get that out as soon as I can. Uh, okay, reading notes here. Thank you for the well wishes. What's a bow? Um, and then Google bought them, and you get 17 hours of commercials for three minutes of content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. These guys are building to be sold. That's what they're doing. For instance, if you have a podcast right now, you can either pay people to host it, or you can go to Red Circle um, or Anchor. I chose not to go to Anchor. I went to Red Circle instead. They will host you for free. As many podcasts, you can do a podcast every day that's two hours long. And they will not charge you. Whereas everybody else for that would charge you about 40 bucks, 50 bucks, because it's so much bandwidth. But Red Circle is looking to get sold like Anchor was. Anchor was bought by Spotify for who knows how much. And I think Red Circle is looking for the same deal. So if you get in with them now in their first year, they just started, you will be able to ride their investor's money. The investor is paying your bills so that they build a following. And if the plan is good, some bigger company will come in and just scoop it up and pay for it. Then the investors made their money and you got two, three years of a really cheap product for whatever. I'm not saying that's great. I hate that model, but that's what it is. And uh, that's where we're at. Thank you guys for hanging out with me doing this. Oh, Spotify paid 340 million for Anchor and Gimlet. Yeah, I remember that sale. I didn't know how much it was though. Yeah, so I think Anchor was like, uh, you know, we'll host your stuff for free. And they invested maybe millions and millions of dollars, but they got bought by, you know, for 340 million, they probably made their money back and more. <laughs> According to Google. I remember that sale, actually. That was, I think it was 2017, 2018. Yeah, they were there because Spotify made this huge purchase and, and, and Gimlet was a, a big uh, company for podcasting. And they were saying like, uh oh, is this the beginning of the podcast wars? Because normally it was, you know, Apple all day long. They're the ones that owned the directory or not owned it, but they were the first ones in. They're the ones that uh, called it podcasting. They were the only ones keeping it alive for 20 years, 10, 20 years, 2000s to um to about 2017. Bonsui. Yeah, I don't want many people to know it's my birthday because, you know, it's just another data point that somebody could use to rob my identity, but uh I am one day one one year closer to boomerhood. What's up, Nth Dimensional? All right, one last thing. Uh, so we looked at Canvas today. We also looked at this amazing editor, uh, Descript. This is this is still like just just mature enough to use. I'm not sure it's production ready. You could see it takes a long time to do stuff, but it is a game changer for editors and content creators. You can literally edit by just changing the text. And the artificial intelligence will dupe your voice. So if you need to add in something you didn't say, you can do that. That's amazing. I didn't show that because I'm not ready to, but um, it does take 24 hours for the program to learn your voice. It's crazy, crazy. We'll see if this works. Yeah, end of stream. Sorry. Oh. Well, I imagine this isn't really going to be a... <laughs> I want to steal Ent's voice. This is from Lord Kalas. I want to steal Ent's voice and plaster it all over Descript uh, to have him read me bedtime stories. <laughs> all right, guys, take care. We will uh, see you again Sunday. That's when I'll be back on to do uh, our usual podcast. Take care.